Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint a couple really cute little mini canvases with some mushrooms. Let's get started. All right, we're going to be using five by five inch canvases. I love these little um, mini canvases because you can kind of prop them up. They've got a nice thick side here and sturdy. Um, woo, that was loud, <laughs> sorry. And um, I've pre-painted them with a little bit of yellow oxide. So just kind of a yellowish background color or even orange would be really nice with this project, I think. Um, to start out, uh, let me go over our colors. We're gonna use Burnt Umber, Burnt Sienna, Quinacridone Magenta, Pyrrole Orange, uh, yellow oxide, that's that background color, Indian yellow hue, cadmium yellow light, green gold, uh, phthalo turquoise, ultramarine blue, unbleached titanium, titanium white, and some gloss glazing liquid. All right, so first I think I'm going to... I'm, I can do this two ways. I can either do the background solid and then paint the mushrooms on top or kind of paint around the mushroom, paint the mushrooms on top of this yellow and then paint around the background. So I want my background to be kind of an off-white. I did do some colors in my um, digital drawing when I kind of was pre-sketching these ideas out. And I think I'm going to do the top corner um, opposite. So the red one and the blue one um, this time. And maybe we'll do the other two in another video but for now I think we're just going to do two so um I think I'm going to go ahead and paint the background I um I think it it'll make it easier to do the rest of this so paint it yellow and then paint over it you're like why would we do that but um it does kind of make a little bit of difference it it you will be able to see this yellow kind of peeking through I'm not going to put it on fully solid um and then I can also kind of make it a little bit darker um along the edges maybe and maybe just leave my edges yellow I don't know we'll see how we like it like this but I'm going to go ahead and just kind of lay on a light coat of unbleached titanium over the whole thing I'll add a little bit of water just to make it flow but I don't want it su super watered down so fairly normal thickness Hope you guys are doing well and hope if you're new to my channel that you subscribe. There's a little bell down there by the subscribe button that you can click also to remind yourself of uh, upcoming videos. So it'll send you a little email. Um, those are really handy because we do live streams every Tuesday. Right now we're doing these premieres. Um, so hello to myself who's watching tonight. <laughs> kind of weird but I, I'm gonna get to chat so yay I'm recording this ahead of time so that I can chat with you guys live while we're watching it together I think it should be fun um, all right there we go so I've painted those backgrounds you can see they're kind of splotchy that's kind of the look that I'm going for if you want a cleaner look you can cover them completely with a solid coat or just start out with whatever color you want on your background. Of course, the sky's the limit. This is your painting. Um, you do you. All right, I'm gonna dry these really quick and I'll come right back. All right, I think I'm going to also do some splattering and I think I'm gonna do this beforehand so that um, it can dry and um, it won't get on top of our pumpkins later. So I think I'm gonna use the turquoise to do my splatters. I'm adding that unbleached titanium to it so that it's kind of a light turquoisey color. So I want a little bit of this color in here. This will unify both. There's not going to be any in my red one so this is a way to introduce this color into this red one that I'll be doing. The other one over here is going to have some of this in the actual pumpkin or the uh, pumpkin <laughs> the actual um, mushroom itself. Speaking of pumpkins, I'm, I did one um, for this series of mini canvases already. Hope you missed if you missed it. It's a really fun little project. I'll show it to you. Super cute. It probably needs some splatters, doesn't it? <laughs> I won't do that to you guys. 
All right, let's dry it again real quick. Okay, it's mostly dry. I'm gonna take my paper towel now and just dab it off. And this will just take off just some of the extra color on these. You see it lightened it up. I don't know if you can see that. Kind of creates a little halo effect, like it's a little darker in the center on some of these, you can tell. I like the look. If you don't like it, let it dry completely. Again, it's your project. I'm just showing you kind of a way of doing it, not the best or only way. All right. I always hate it when the artists are like, don't do this, and they like put a big X, because art is so subjective. Do what makes you happy. And, um, you know, if you want realistic art, then yes, there is, you know, oftentimes like a all right um way you know to get it to look realistic maybe but techniques are very subjective and um, art itself is, you know what looks good is different to every person so you do what looks good to you all right so I'm kind of just drawing out my little red mushroom I want to put a little fern here that's curly cute I don't know if you can see this very well and then my mushroom is going to take up most of this upper spot. I think I'm going to make them a little bit straighter sided. Now if you wanted to, um, we could maybe make, let's just go ahead and make it so you can see a little bit of the underside. I like it when that happens. So we can do like that and kind of try to make sure that this is lined up sort of in the center of our mushroom as much as possible. And then we'll have a little daisy and some leaf, leafy things coming down here. Okay, so this one is a little bit different, and I'm going to put a dandelion with him. So the dandelion has these jagged leaves. And it's going to be like right in here, and I might put two, or I might do like a little flower coming up right here or something, because I feel like I can fit two in here. And then this one... I'm going to make him a little bit shorter than the, than the mushroom there, or the, and the dandelion there, and do him kind of curving like that. I think that'll be cute. I don't think I'm going to put the snail on this one because I wanted to, I think, give it a little bit more detail on this mushroom itself make him a little bit bigger than I had it in the sketch so and I'm gonna give him this little kind of jaunty little curve right there okay really cute just using regular school chalk for this nothing special about it you can use something water soluble is what I would say Pack chalk pastel something like that um, will work best okay clean out my fan brush, set that aside, and any of the brushes that I'm using, I'm going to keep them wet while they're, so they don't dry out. So I'm just kind of keeping them wet off to the side here. I'm going to put my, put my other brushes over, out of the way over here. All right, so I think I'm going to start with the 3 8 inch angle brush, and we'll just fill in our red. If you have a red that you like and you don't want to use these colors, use whatever floats your boat. Um, does not have to be these colors to be correct, whatever. It's just going to be different. So I think a cadmium red medium would probably be really nice. Um, I'm going to go a little bit more orange, so I'm mixing my orange with my red so that it's kind of 50-50-ish. This pyrrole orange is very similar to cadmium red light, so if you don't have it, you could use a cadmium red light, or, or like I said, you could just use cadmium medium, cadmium red medium. Now you can see both of those colors are transparent, so I can see through my um, background color, so I need to add white to it to make it a little bit more opaque. I might even add a little bit of that um, background yellow because it's going to also make it more opaque yellow oxide. Now this is going to make it a little bit more peachy, but that's okay. We can always add our darker red on top after this dries. So this just makes it um, so that that color covers a little bit better. 
And I'm just using that angle brush to smooth out any big clumps of paint that I see. Okay. And since we're going to do the back side, I'm going to kind of curl it around here just a little bit. through the background. Really weird. I don't want to cover. Okay, there we go. So we've got our little sides curled down a little bit and you just think about an oval shape that we're seeing underneath and that's what is going to be that underneath shape. So if you're kind of having trouble drawing it, kind of think about that, that that little Part is just going to cut off and I'm going to get a little bit of the burnt umber, a little bit of blue and then some white or unbleached titanium to make it kind of more off-white. So this is what we're seeing underneath our mushroom, just a little sliver of the underside. Fill that in. Get a clump of paint there. All right, that'll be cute. And then let's use this darker kind of darkish brown gray. I'm just using the blue to make it more gray than brown. The blue will kind of make it more neutral. And just use that to do the center. I'm going to go right up into it with that center part. I'm trying to center it a little bit. Also, one here. Let's curve it slightly. And then kind of widen it at the base where it's kind of touching the ground. All right, I think that'll look good. I'm leaving a little bit of room at the bottom for some grasses and things to go. I'm going to get my green gold. A little bit of turquoise. And some unbleached titanium. It's gonna make a nice medium green. I'm just gonna kinda dab that at the bottom here. Just to give a little base for my the rest of my stuff to grow out of. Use the tip of the brush to draw in some little leafies. I'm not going to get too detailed with the leaves yet because i got to finish the the mushroom, but I'm going to go ahead and start kind of the drawing in the fern. Right there. And then the for the sunflower or the daisy. It's really a black eyed Susan. Okay, let's leave that one to dry and we'll work on this guy while he's drying. So this one is going to be a turquoisey color. I'm going to go ahead and add just a touch of that green gold. If you don't have green gold, you can use um, thalo green. And we can see just the touch of that green gold makes it um, much more of a regular green. And then a 
little bit of unbleached titanium. Right, so that's going to be kind of the base color for this guy. And he has kind of a, kind of looks like a cone, kind of a sharp point, and then it comes down and then comes back out a little bit. Mushrooms are really fun to draw. They're just very simple shapes, not very hard at all, and they just feel like fall, don't they? I don't know. They're very popular right now. You'll probably see them in a lot of products right now. So hopefully this will show you can make your own if you want to. Cleaning that out, I'm going to get some of that burnt umber and some of the unbleached titanium and a little bit of that turquoise color. And I'm going to spray these so that they don't dry out while I'm working. And you can see this color is kind of similar to that ultramarine blue color even. I'm going to go a little bit lighter with it, maybe just use white to put out some more of that unbleached titanium. And the thing with acrylics is it's really important to let them dry while you're in between these layers. So we've got a lot of paint on here right now and I can't really do anything until it's dry. So I'm just going to paint the areas that I haven't done yet and then we'll come back to finish adding details and things. If I mess with them right now, that'll it'll just lift off what I've already done. All right, so I'm making a darker color with burnt sienna and turquoise here, making a darker green. I'm going to maybe add a little bit of that green gold to it as well. So if you don't have green gold, you can mix like Indian yellow hue, a lot of Indian yellow with a little bit of a phthalo green or even like a uh, phthalo blue. Um, phthalo blue and yellow make phthalo green, so you could start out that way if you wanted to. Okay. Um, I'm not drawing this to scale necessarily because this dandelion is probably going to be bigger than the mushroom, but we'll just kind of do some leaves here. Oops, they're actually the opposite way. They angle down. I didn't notice that. So let's angle them down. They angle back towards the... to fix that. 
Let me actually just wipe that off because I started out the wrong direction. Let's try that again. So since my background's dry, I can wipe this off as long as I catch it before it's fully dry. This part dried a little bit, I think. Nope, I think I got it off, okay. You gotta be careful not to rub too hard because you can wipe off the background paint too. It's not fully cured for about 24 hours, so even though it dry, it's dry, it's it can be wiped off or scrubbed off, I guess, more accurate term. Um, maybe let's let's go ahead and just draw in where my dandelion's gonna be. And then maybe I'll do the leaves coming out this way. Since I don't have a lot of room here. And then maybe we'll do one like little flower right here. Okay, so do it an arrow facing back. And then it kind of tapers off small as it comes down. Okay. And it's a little bit rounded on the top, so it's not so pointy. I need to round that top off just a little bit. I'm not sure I love these leaves yet. Well, this one is covering up the other one. So what I can do, let me get some more of that dark color. I can make them a little bit different color. And that way it'll be easier to tell which is which and which one's on top of the other one. Like that. Get some of that light yellow orange, or, I'm sorry, light yellow green. Orange. Okay. And we'll have a big fuzzy yellow flower kind of over the top of this one too. So I'm going to get a little bit of white and I'm going to put my details over the top of this green one and see if I can get it to cover, get a little bit of that. There we go. So just making it a little bit different color. for the center line there. Mm, I don't 
don't know. I don't love these leaves. I don't love them. is dry now. So now we can go back in with my darker red, magenta and pyrrole orange. Might add just a little bit of the burnt sienna too that'll give it more of an earthy tone and use that to brighten up that red. Okay, so that looks good. Let's go ahead and add some white or unbleached titanium with a little bit of the orange. If it looks too pink, just add some yellow. There we go. And I think I'm going to have my light source come from up here. And I'm just dabbing that on while that red's wet. It'll blend with it a little bit, make it easier to integrate. Right, that looks pretty good. Go ahead and do the same with this one. I'm gonna get that turquoise color. Add some white. Maybe a little bit of unbleached titanium to soften it up. That white's kind of harsh sometimes. So the unbleached titanium just kind of makes it a little bit more neutral tint. And the red one had dry, had wet paint underneath. This one's not wet, so I'm using a little bit less paint on here. And sort of dry brushing it a little bit. Get a little bit more white here. And let's go ahead and roll up on this right here and add a little highlight right there where it's kind of raised up and then another one at the top here. Alright, that looks pretty good. That one needs more, but I need to let it dry. Alright, and then I'm going to get some of the turquoise with a little bit of burnt sienna. And uh, this is the g green that I used here, but I'm not going to add as much to it, so it's not going to be as dark. And I'm just going to kind of use it on this side where it's like the darker side of the mushroom. Wipe my brush off once I kind of get that initial color down. And then just kind of pull it up. And like right here, I don't, I want it to kind of integrate, so I'm going to wipe most of my paint out here and just have a very light touch. I'm going to push that paint around. If it's not moving around, you can add just a teeny tiny bit of water to your brush, but you kind of have to catch it while it's still wet. If it dries, it's too, too late to blend it. But if it's dry, then you can just add a little bit of your light color back on top or, you know, a little bit of that original color back on top here so say if it wasn't blended I could just go back over it with a little bit of the lighter color wipe my brush out again and then kind of blend through both of them I, I don't mind it being a little bit painterly so 
a little bit of the brush stroke showing. It doesn't have to be a super smooth blend. Okay. All right. I like that, how that one's coming in along. Let me switch to a little bit smaller brush, and then I can start doing some of the details. So I'm going to get a two round. That one was the three inch angle, if I didn't mention it before. I think I did, but maybe I didn't. I don't know. Sometimes I get going painting and forget. Getting some, gonna make that gray that was our base here again. I'm gonna go a little bit darker. So get the burnt umber and ultramarine blue. Mix those two together. Get dark gray. I have a little bit of this unbleached titanium in my brush too. I'm wanting to go kind of just 50-50 so it's very like neutral just gray not too brown not too blue right in the middle looking kind of green all right so I'm gonna go up under here you know where the under part is Go on either side of my stem and darken up just right up underneath the top part of the mushroom there. Wipe my brush out. Get some more of the unbleached titanium. of the mid-tone, try to get it close to what we had there, mid-tone color. Maybe a little bit darker. two together just a little bit right there. There we go. I may have put out pyro. Let me make sure that's ultramarine. That it's acting like thalo blue. I think that's thala blue. Yes, it is. No wonder. I was like, that's turning green. Let's try some actual ultramarine blue. It's kind of too late now, but. I'll just leave it. It's too late. I've already done it. So instead of ultramarine, this is thalo blue and burnt and ultramarine blue and thalo blue and burnt umber. Going down one side here. Again, our light's coming from this side, so this side would getting, be getting more light and this side would be more shadowed. Getting some of the highlight color. I'm going to go on this side with the highlight color. So just a little bit of ultra, uh, light unbleached titanium mixed in with the base color. There. Oh yeah, there's a little flange that kind of sticks out too. We need to do that part. So let's go ahead and get that unbleached titanium and put in that little flange that hangs down here. Getting that darker color. that up in 
into it. Okay. I don't want it to be too fussy, so I'm gonna kind of leave it a little bit. Maybe use a little bit of the burnt umber there to make it a little bit different color. But also, it's gonna be a little bit dark right up under here too, so I don't want it to be too too light right there. This should be dark all the way across there. But you should just be able to tell that that there's a stem, so maybe just a little bit lighter where it first comes down. Okay, that looks good. Now let me get the unbleached titanium. I still have these other colors on my brush. And I'm going to do my little stem. So think about this being like the center, but it's really up here, be the center of a spoke. So all these lines are gonna kinda come up towards that line there. And just try to keep it in your mind where we're pointing these to. That's where they'll all go. Okay, so that looks good. I'm not seeing the front side necessarily, but we can do a few like little hints of something kind of peeking through if we want to. Okay, that looks good. Get my now I'm gonna get the burnt or burnt umber and ultramarine blue. You'll see the difference. <laughs> Why is that turning green? It usually turns like blue if it's too blue, and then it turns brown if it's too brown. You can see the difference there. Very different, very different Brown grays. So let's go ahead and do my little dots. There's like little teeny tiny ones right up along the edge here. And then bigger ones. In the middle, this is just kind of the shadow of the dots, so we're just doing the kind of placing, sort of keep it random. And then at the very top, they, they're kind of small again. And they go off the edge, too. Okay. And let's do the same for this guy. He's got dots, too. Not, not as many in the top. All right, let's go ahead and give him his underside details too. Get a little bit more of the burnt umber. There's a little bit of that um, turquoise in his underbelly. And it's more just kind of fuzzies. So I'm just gonna kind of tap little fuzzies in there, but kind of pointing them toward the middle. And then get some white. Dab that on. His stem is fuzzy also, has little fuzzy bits sticking out. I'm going to get the un that darker color here. Just dab on some of that. And then let's turquoise I'm gonna go ahead and get some of that phthalo blue mixture and some glaze. And I'm going to darken up underneath here just a little bit and around my stem again, kind of like I did on the other one. Kind of across the top there. some white and add it to that color. And 
Needs to be lighter. This goes kind of right up over the edge of that. And then it has some of these little dots coming down. I'll try to keep it random so they're not like all in a line too much. They are kind of in a line, but they're not perfectly lined up. So I just want to keep it natural looking. That looks good. Yeah, I think that'll work. Getting some white, brighter white here, and now I'm going to do some of these with white. Mostly on my light side. I'm going kind of over the top of where I've already done. <clears throat> Leaving these ones over here a little bit darker. And then let's go ahead and do that on the stem too, especially where the light side is. Okay, I think that'll look good. Let's go ahead and use this color over here on these guys. I'm gonna go a little bit darker. right at the bottom here and circle them around and then a little bit bigger ones I'm just kind of set my brush to the side and pull slightly just little dabs and if they're getting to same 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 then just get some fresh paint roll it around, come back so that you're kind of changing the bristles of the brush. They kind of get pressed down and they'll do kind of the same mark over and over again if you let it. So just make sure you watch for that so that you don't have too much of the sameness happening. This one has bigger dots kind of like in the middle too, so I'm going to kind of make some of these really big. Maybe combine some of them so that they're much bigger. Using some white now to really make them obvious. The bigger ones tend to be kind of around the thickest part of the mushroom. Good. I'm going to use a little bit of this white on the part here and a little bit on the part there. And then if it dip disappeared too much, which I feel like it did kind of, I'm going to get a little bit of that burnt umber and just come back in and mark that back in so I can see where that edge is on him. Okay. Looks good. And then one last thing. I want to kind of blend these in because they look a little bit too obvious where they're placed. So I get a little bit of my dark under color of that mushroom. I was trying to mix some ultramarine blue, but I'm just going to use the color we already had in there, I think, and do kind of a mid-tone. So I have like the dark and the light, but let's do kind of a mid-tone and that'll kind of blend those in a little bit. So it's not so stark of a contrast. Right, that looks good. 
then I can come back in with the white and just pop a few of them with a little white highlight here and there. And they're very small, so I really I kind of can put more. I have a big space in between mine, so do a few more and reduce that space. And I think I want just a little bit of that red peeking through at the back. So I think I'm gonna do just a, like a little tiny bit of red peeking through the back side of that. Okay. And maybe the same thing on this one. That's the turquoise color one. Just a little tiny bit of that darker turquoise right at the base where it curves down. I really like him, he's cute. Alright, so let's do our daisy on here. And well, actually, before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and glaze a little bit of color on my spots once they dry I'm gonna get a little bit of that gray I'm making ultramarine blue and burnt umber here and I'm going to dab over the top maybe had a little too much glaze there I couldn't see it just darken that up on the bottom a little bit You may not have to do this, I don't know, I kind of just got mine a little too bright. And you can do that on these ones too if you want. If they need a little blending in. I'm trying not to get too fussy with this. I like to do details. Let's do a little highlight on him. Get a little bit of white on the tip of my angle brush and just brush that on right over that area. Kind of putting a little bit of a transparent wash over the top. And I'm gonna do a little bit right there too. tone to it. Kind of going in between my spots here too. I don't want to... I should have done this before I did my spots. I just thought, just noticed that I hadn't, so I'm trying to add my highlight in around my spots. Not ideal, but... So do this part before you do your spots, maybe. Hopefully you haven't been painting along in real time <laughs> without watching it first. This is why I tell people to watch it all the way through first because I do tend to make things hard for myself by changing things later or adding details later when it would have been a lot easier to add them. I did remember to do the, the splatters first though because I usually do that at the end and then have to wipe them off a bunch of stuff. All right, I'm gonna wipe off my chalk marks now. This way I can see what I've got. Not in the way. And I'll take it off the dandelion too. I know where that's going. Okay. So for the dandelion, let's go ahead and I like the leaves now better than I did before. It's weird once you get kind of some of your details in, they don't start to bother you as much that's why I like tell students you know if you're like stuck on a spot and you don't really like what it looks like like walk away come back and then a lot of times it's really obvious what needs to be changed and you've been sitting there for two hours working on it and it 
you know, just getting more and more frustrating. And then um, you walk away and come back and all of a sudden it's like, oh, yeah, I need to do whatever. It's, you know, it happens all the time. So I'm going to do a little yellow flower for my dandelion. They're only cute when they're on the canvas, right? When they're in your yard, you're like, ah, kill. But <laughs> when they're on the can canvas, they're like, oh, these are so cute. But we're actually not big dandelion killers. We I, They don't bother me. As long as they're not in my garden bed. Then game on, but... Right, and then they really don't have like a center. They're kind of just all fuzzy all over. So I'm gonna, I, I went dark here. I went with my yellow oxide, Indian yellow hue and burnt sienna to start with. And I'm gonna kind of put some more of that in the center, I think. And then I did my, in, my cadmium yellow light on top. So I'm gonna do that. I don't love these. I don't love the leaves. Kind of wish I'd just done one. Maybe. But not much for it now. All right, let's get the burnt sienna and I'm going to get some green gold and use that to make the center of the dandelion and go up from the stalk just a little bit. Get some of that green again and kind of bring it up a little bit. And then get some burnt umber and the just kind of do the lightest little limbs coming out. They're all in this big circle. They all come from this dark kind of middle area. We'll put a bunch of white on top of them, but I just want a few little things coming out there. Look good. Get some white with my cadmium yellow light. The ones in the middle that are facing you are going to be shorter. They may be this long on the sides. You can see kind of the whole thing, but when they are facing you, they look shorter. So we're doing little short ones in the middle because those are the ones that are usually poking straight up at us. Right. Getting some green gold with some white. I don't know, leaves the leaves out. I don't like them, but I think it's just, they're crowded. It's just crowding out the space here. I don't think you need them. Maybe just some grass would be good enough. They don't feel like they add. I like this one coming up, but this one is bothering me. Okay, so let me try doing this because I'm just going to keep not liking this, I have a feeling. So I'm gonna try to 
cover it. This is not ideal. I don't really want to do this, but what I'm going to do is mix my background color and my foreground color together. Cover this whole leaf. Now, if I've got stuff underneath that, that would be covering it, like this one here, I can leave it right there. I don't have to cover that part, but I'm just going to cover this part up. Get that turquoise and burnt sienna. And I can kind of distract it by putting like my leaves out a little bit more right there too. Kind of camouflage it a little bit. Okay, that's better I think. Do the center for them. That and that. Okay, we'll fix that leaf there. But that's better. Just one leaf. Let's wet down all these brushes so they don't dry out. drink break for the brushes. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and continue with this two round here. I'm going to let that dry and come back to it, so I don't want to mess with that right now. Let's go ahead and work on this one. In some green gold, a little bit of turquoise, and some unleached titanium. And we'll start at the center here and just do little dots on either side of. And I'm kind of just using the brush to create the shape of the leaf. See? a little bit darker than that. Get some of that burnt sienna. Make a color close to that one. And go in between the more mid-tone. We've already got the center line so it just makes it really easy to go on either side of it. Add some water there, sorry. As I go down, I'm pressing down a little harder to get a little thicker line. I need to clean off a spot here. I'm getting kind of bits of other colors in my paint here. It's been setting. I could have moved him away from my mushroom a little bit more, but it's all right. Get some leaves here, put some leaves out there. Do some leaves over on this one too. Okay, 
this is dry now. Whoop, no, it's not. Then I'm going to use the same color here. Christmas tree right now. Okay, much better. Much better. Starting to get there. Then let's do a center line on here. And then a highlight line with the yellow. A little bit of the white. Okay. Still don't love that leaf, but you know, it's there. And get a little bit of that white, the washed out unbleached titanium, and kind of just try to hide that background color a little bit right there. Let's put our little daisy in over here, getting the yellow and the unbleached or the yellow and the Indian yellow and some white funny when I'm doing these digital sketches there's certain things that are much easier to do than others you know like some 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 of the brush strokes are much easier to do with the bra actual brush than with the pen and then some things like shading and things are way easier to do with the digital to digital tool you know um, Kind of interesting. I've enjoyed kind of learning the last year and a half, two years. Yeah, I don't know how long I've had. Actually, probably longer than that. I don't remember when I got my iPad, but it definitely. I use tra use it for my making my traceables now. I made a dark purpley color here with the burnt umber, ultramarine blue, and a little bit of magenta. Dabbing it into the center there. Okay, looks good. And let's go ahead and put our our little details in that. And I think I'm going to use a liner brush to do the white because it'll just make it easier to use an actual liner brush. So this is the script liner two, number two. And I've got fluid acrylics too. So having a thin brush and having good fluid acrylics or at least a fluid paint that has no resistance on the brush is really important. So I'm going to just tap and do the little, little tiny crazy lines. I might go a little bit darker at first now that I think about it. Maybe get a little bit of my gray if I can get some gray. So I have a little bit of variation in my white here. So it's not just white everywhere. I 
kind of doing a little bit of. Lighter color there. And maybe there's a little bit of blue in some of it, but maybe there's a shadow on this side. Get a little bit of that ultramarine blue and a little bit of the burnt umber, so there's a little gray. Maybe some of these over here are gray, blue, away from the light. Just give it some detail. And then my white, again, just white, plain, no, plain white this time. There's little cross hatches. So if you look at each one, it's just this little star kind of on the end of a little. I think we've all seen them. So I'm just doing these little teeny tiny lines there. So you can see just two teeny tiny lines that are kind of cross hatching and meeting in the middle. And that's about all I'm gonna do with those. I'm not gonna get super fancy with it. And then I'm gonna get a little bit more of my yellow and do some more of the yellow lines. Especially over the top of this. Maybe make that flower a little bit bigger. So it covers up some of that green there. Okay, that looks good. Get a little bit of the burnt sienna. Using a little bit of that in there. Maybe a little bit of the white. There we go. So making it almost the same size as the dandelion up there. And then let me use this light yellow green here detail to those leaves not much they don't have a lot of like veining in them that I'm seeing in my picture reference photo that I'm looking at but they do kind of have some wobbling okay so that looks good I think I'm gonna just put a few little red dots um, they have these little red kind of almost like orangey red little fungi that come up sometimes and grasses, you can see them like in the pictures with fungi. There'll be these little just dabs of red. That'll just give it a little tie in to this one here. And then I do want this one to have a leaf on him. Just a little, just a little one. I'm pretty happy with the way the fern turned out, so I don't think I'm going to mess with him at all. I was going to highlight it, but I don't think I need to. I like how it turned out, like kind of the way I laid down the color. It, it um, has a little variation. I might do a little tiny highlight. Let me get a little bit of yellow and a little bit of the in, um, green gold and just do just on these ones that are right of, over the, over that, I feel like maybe. 
clean up any of them that look a little messy. hue because they are kind of a more orangey yellow and this time uh, I'm gonna just set the brush down and flick it towards the center to get a little dry brush dry brushing I find really hard to do on the digital drawings <laughs> it's like really not really difficult to get it to do it just the right way I need just some definition in these maybe get a little orange with my Indian yellow hue and the burnt sienna just has to be a little bit darker for it to show up with yellow so sometimes you just have to go a little yellower than you want to but you know or a little bit darker than you think you need to but because you know yellow is such a light color but there's not any contrast if you don't go a little bit darker so sometimes you have to kind of fudge it and go a little darker than it than it really is and then add so I'm gonna go from the center out with this darker color on these daisies Black-eyed Susans. Okay, and then get my burnt umber, a little bit of maybe burnt sienna is a better color, and maybe a tiny bit of unbleached titanium. Yeah. Really dark. There we go dark at the bottom and then I was trying to put a little highlight at the top there didn't want to do it Let me try that again a little bit of white and maybe a little bit of this orangey red burnt sienna there we go just a little bit keep it kind of in the middle of the center though otherwise it'll look like it'll kind of disappear into the flower so just kind of right in the middle of the flower a little bit all right <coughs> don't love this flower or leaf I kind of just wish I'd done the um, I mean it's all right I just don't love it I don't know why but I think it, it's just fighting me Now that I've got the lighter or the darker color on here, I'm going to put some lighter color again and try to leave some of that darker showing here and there. That's better. All right. thing I might do some moss so I'm gonna get some of that green gold and some of the Indian yellow hue that makes kind of a nice mossy color just add that towards the bottom those are both transparent colors so it's not gonna cover very well and then I'm gonna get get some white and add that doesn't have to be too much just a little and I'm kind of dabbing so that my brush is opening up a little bit and creating little broken lines for me you can do more grasses whatever you want to do there but I might do a little bit of burnt sienna as well just a little dark dirt color you know 
little contrast to kind of ground them. <clears throat> All right, there we go. Oh, they're super cute. I hope you guys liked it. I like how they turned out. That was really fun. Cute little projects. Hope you guys try it. I think I would have done this one different and maybe just have taken this out and done a few leaves. Although, I kind of like it now that I've finished that yellow flower. I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you liked it or not. <laughs> Which one is your favorite? I know mine. <laughs> All right, thank you guys so much for watching tonight. I appreciate you. Hit the surprise, sub, subscribe, woo, not surprise, subscribe button. And um, hopefully we'll come back for more. Also, thumbs up, share this if you liked it. And um, that really helps our channel when you share our projects on social media. Um, one last thing that I wanna do, this is kind of an interesting little thing. I haven't done this in a while, but I'm going to get a little bit of burnt umber on a paper towel. I got a little burnt sienna there too. I'm going to antique my corners. I don't do this very often, but it actually helps a lot with um, a little project like this. It kind of gives a little character to those corners. It feels more like a vignette, um, and it kind of messes musses it up a little bit it's not I don't want it super grungy but I do want like a little character in that corner this is a lot of light everywhere you know it's very light so this kind of will darken up those corners a little bit I'm just using white water to help wipe it off and it's just really pushing that dark color into the canvas texture oh, there we go so there's one with it and this one is without so you, I don't know you tell me if you like it or not but I'm going to do both of mine that way Mark's going to laugh at me because I'm always doing stuff at the last minute like this I'll say goodbye and then I'll you know like find one more thing to do I didn't sign them either. I think I'm gonna sign them mine on the edges. I did that on these ones. Just signed it down here. Since they're so small, kind of makes sense. So I'll sign mine down here and I'll say good night for now. All right, thank you so much. Bye.